Hi, Jerry here again for IB Myositis Viewers Everywhere. When you've been diagnosed with inclusion body myositis, there's a part of us that searches for special solutions that people without IBM don't have to worry about. Our condition is rare and not copied by too many other medical situations. Having inclusion body myositis is like a puzzle challenging us to put it all together. But every time you think you have the 500 piece puzzle almost put together, the puzzle changes to 1,000 pieces, then into a 5,000 piece puzzle, then to 10,000 pieces. It never ends! Our IBM challenges just keep growing and growing as our muscles slip further and further into atrophy. That search for solutions to each and every challenge is considered necessary to allow ourselves a more normal in our now unnormal world. During many of my 34 previous episodes, I've talked about the many changes and adaptations I've had to make along my journey with inclusion body myositis, and yes, there are many that I probably have taken for granted and not mentioned. In this episode, I'd like to dwell on what might be considered my planning process and show you one adaptation as a successful result of research, planning, and yes, frugal expensing. First, how is process planning used in IBM? What is IBM Adaptation Process Planning? You can research plenty of different process planning models from the Internet, but I'm going to simplify it for use in planning for your IBM adaptations by using an example of a couple of adaptations of my own, showing both a small failure and a big success. Process planning in general is the development of goals, costs, and functionality required to achieve the needed objectives and can hopefully reduce the number of adaptation failures. Don't get discouraged by failure. Unfortunately, failure is a large part of IBM. My four steps of planning for IBM adaptations are number one, what problem do I want to overcome? Number two, what is my expense budget and timing? Three, where are all the locations this adaptation will be used? 4. How long do I expect this new adaptive device to work for me? When you've answered and documented these previous points, you are on your way to a successful adaptation. If you forget to answer one, it could turn your project sideways, as it did in one of my adaptations. Making a list here is your friend, so find a blank note page or space on your phone, tablet, or computer, or ask your caregiver to take some notes. Making that list may just divulge your plan's shortfalls and save you time, effort, and money. I spent a lot of time in my episodes reminding people to plan way ahead of their current stage of IBM. We want to maximize the effective length of time we can use each new adaptive device, so knowing where you are on the functional rating scale and some forward thinking and research in what your IBM future may become is imperative. On to this episode's project. What problem do I want to overcome? In my case, the overall objective was easier access to my cell phone. I spend a good portion of my day sitting in my power chair and need access to my phone to receive calls from channel subscribers with IBM questions, make calls, yes, sometimes calls for help and assistance that I need because of this debilitating and frustrating muscle disease. First, my failure. I tried a few cheap, inexpensive methods to keep my cell phone available at times when I'm in my power chair, but my stage three progression of this disease outpaced previous adaptations. I've installed a lasso lanyard that I showed in previous episodes that I could place around my neck, but a year later couldn't get the lanyard up and over my head by myself. I then placed the lanyard around my power chair's joystick controller until my weak hands could no longer grasp the lanyard in time to answer a call. 
as the power chair's joystick controller is on the left side, it would be conceivable to find a phone holder that mounted on the right armrest. My wish to find an economical solution drove me to purchasing a failure, a $5 magnetic cell phone car vent clip mount, and had my wife modify it a little to fit in my power chair's cup holder mount. After my wife modified the clip mount, and with a self-adhesive metal plate affixed to the back of the phone, my trial runs over some rough concrete walking paths proved that this adaptation worked well, stayed in place, but led to a problem that I should have realized in the process planning point number three. Where are all the locations this adaptation will be used? Although my inexpensive $5 magnetic phone holder worked in most locations and could be accessed with my left hand while mounted on the right armrest, it was in the way when I pulled my power chair up to my computer desk. The cell phone in this location was right where my right arm had to be located in order to attempt to operate the computer mouse. Some might say to just remove the phone and magnetic clip when pulling up to the computer desk or dining room table. Easier said than done in my stage 3 single digit FRS scoring condition. Oh well, only $5 spent and I still have a phone holder that I could use in our ramp van if we wish. On to more serious planning. My fourth point of IBM adaptation planning is asking how long the adaptation will work for me and is it worth the investment. As I previously stated, my FRS score of 2.75 indicates I'm in the dire straits of IBM Stage 3. Whatever investment I make to resolve this current problem will have to work as long as I can still operate my power chair. The answer to my cell phone dilemma had been sitting right in front of my eyes for the last four years and one night when sitting in my recliner looking at the new Quantum Edge 3.0 power chair that I recently took delivery on, the light bulb came on, gears in my head started to turn, and I started my pre-investment checklist. Most importantly, would it work in all locations I accessed with my power chair better than the $5 cell phone clip experiment that I now deemed a failure? Accessible on the right side using the left hand? Should work. Easily removed out of the way when at my computer desk? Time will tell. Easily moved out of the way when at our dining room table or at a restaurant? Should work. Access in and out of the chair? Hopefully, but only real-time trials will tell. In our ramp van? No problem. Easy to install for my wife? Hopefully. Or could be another small project for friend Mike to help out with. My plan was to install the same type of swing away mount on the right armrest for my phone as the joystick utilized on the left armrest of my power chair. I was pleasantly surprised that the necessary parts for this installation were available for a very decent price on eBay. I ordered the parts, received them four days later, and in about 45 minutes my wife and help from our good selection of metric hand tools, the installation was almost complete. For successful installation, you will require the receiver bracket that gets mounted to the underside of the armrest. The only remaining item was to install some means to secure the phone to the swing away mount. My wife quickly produced some self-adhesive magnetic strips that she had in her craft room and they ended up working nicely with the metal disc still secured to the back of my phone from the clip mount mentioned previously. The only thing wrong was the direction of the swing away mount. The way the new mount was received, it was configured in the opposite direction than what I wanted it to swing. Not a problem. In case you are not aware, the swing away bracket arm parts provided on the quantum edge chairs can be configured for the left or right side swing in or swing out. All you have to do is reposition the pivot bolts to swing to your desired direction. I wanted to have the new phone mount swing inward so that I could more easily reach it with my slightly more agile left hand. Now for the post installation test in all the locations I mentioned previously. At my computer desk? Check. At the dining room or restaurant table? Not a problem. Holds during a trail ride on rough concrete? Yes it does. 
isn't in the way for transferring in and out of my chair? Nope. Easy to install? Yes, it was. Inexpensive? $20 for the parts plus $13 shipping, $33 total. I can live with that. And there's a bonus benefit. Because I park my power chair 90 degrees to my recliner, I can answer my phone while seated in my recliner with my left hand without removing it from the chair's mounting bracket. Another bonus benefit is that I can still easily remove it from the bracketry and still use the lanyard that stayed attached. I've been using this swing away cell phone holder for about three weeks now. I'm happy to say it has been a great success to me and for my caregiver. I hope you enjoyed this episode hearing how my planning sequences enable me to still answer the phone to talk to my IBM friends, children, and grandchildren. Please press the thumbs up button below your screen and the subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't done so during the previous episodes. Okay IBMers, let your family phone home, your home, my friends.